<laughs> All right, page 14. This middle one. You're like, this is intermediate? Yes, it is. Um, you just need to factor. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so let's look at this question. First, uh, before you do anything, you need to um, factor. The top is not factorable. The bottom is x plus 5 times x minus 5. OK, so that means vertical asymptote is x equals plus minus 5, whatever does not cancel in the denominator. Second, the horizontal asymptote look at the degree. The degrees are the same, so then it's the ratio of the leading coefficient, so that is 2. There are no holes because nothing cancels. Bless you. Uh, X-intercept is what makes the numerator 0. Nothing makes it 0 except imaginary, so that is none. Um, the y-intercept is when x is 0. So when x is 0, it is 0, comma, negative 1 fifth. All right, that's all we need. All we know, and we're going to graph this. So plus minus 5. The vertical asymptote and then the horizontal asymptote is at 2. And we have no x-intercept. That means it doesn't cross the x-axis. And the y-intercept is negative 1 fifth. OK, now what you need to do is plug in some more points. So probably like negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2. And then also, OK, so this is what I told some people. Whatever, wherever your vertical asymptote is, it creates sections. So this creates three sections. Each section will have a graph. Like it will have something. Like if you end up graphing this and you said done, that would be incorrect. And you should know that is incorrect because every time the vertical asymptote creates a section, you have to have a graph. So um, you just didn't check enough points, okay? So kind of mentally ask yourself, every time this graph divides, this asymptote divides, I need to have a um, graph on every section. Okay, so this graph ends up looking like this. Never crosses the x-axis, uh, x so make sure you don't you know, cross it over somewhere. Any questions? Yeah. Um, you have to um, just put in more points. So I would put in negative six and six, and then check the numbers. Yeah. And then I think what I I've seen with a lot of the students is that you put in your calculator and then you get a wrong number. <laughs> yeah. So that would be horrible. And then so some people they would get points like up here and then up here and then like, hmm, like this. And then you kind, of, you kind of have to tell yourself, does that even look right? Like, does that even make any sense? So usually it's just a calculator problem. Like you put in the calculator wrong. It was supposed to be. Uh, and then a lot of things I saw also was um, something like, let's say you, you put a negative one here. Somehow you would still graph one one here. Like you just had like this, uh, uh, I don't know, just like a, uh, you got kind of tired that morning and then you saw a negative and you wanted to graph positive, something like that. So be careful of that. Um, okay, <coughs> let's check our homework um, really quickly and then we're going to do a few more graphing and then start uh, the next section. All right, first, again, you need to um, factor. And then try to see if something cancels. Whatever cancels is a whole. If it doesn't cancel, it's a vertical asymptote. OK, so we're on page 14, the one in the middle. OK, first of all, you have to factor, obviously. It's going to look like 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 3 over x plus 2 times x plus 1. OK, we can see that this cancels. So we have a reduced function of 2 times x plus 3 over x plus 1. Whatever doesn't cancel is the vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote, look at the degree. The degrees are the same. So horizontal asymptote is the ratio, which is 2. Holes is at negative 2. And to figure out what the number is, we plug it in here. So the answer is negative 2 for y. X-intercept, we also look at here, 
what makes the numerator zero, which is just negative three. Okay, y-intercept is what makes uh, what x is, when x is zero, so that is zero six. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and graph this. So this is gonna look like this. Negative two, negative two is a whole. Negative three, zero is a point zero six, and then this graph look, looks like this. Now, some of you went in and plugged in more points, which is good, except you plug in the points in the wrong place. So, for example, if you want to figure out what happens at negative four, this is what happens if you get it wrong. You plug it in um, here. That is wrong. <coughs> You have to plug it into the original function. Remember, you're graphing the original function. The reduced function is just to help you figure out some stuff. That is not what you are graphing. You have to go back to the original function. And another thing that, um, a, a mistake that I saw a lot of people do was when they factor this, they just got rid of this two. <coughs> yes, when you make it equal to zero, two is gone. However, it is not gone from the function. Right, you're looking at this function, this function doesn't change. You're trying to kind of analyze things from it, but you cannot change the original problem. Does that make sense? So you can never get rid of that too or anything you want to reduce, okay? Yes. So whenever we have to find x intercept, we just write out like the reduce Yes. So like yeah. like yeah. Yes, always in the original one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so graphing is, you know, kind of, this is all we are going over for graphing. If you need more help, please come in. I'll give you more problems and then you can just keep graphing. All right, we are gonna do A4. All right, factoring is definitely a big thing in this chapter. Uh, if you don't remember how to factor, make sure you take out that cheat sheet I gave you uh, in chapter five. Okay, first, uh, factor, factor, factor. That is the first thing you do. Second, we have to figure out what the restrictions are on the variable. That means whatever makes the denominator zero. Okay, that is what we're looking at. This entire chapter, factoring, 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 um, <coughs> denominator. Where is the denominator zero? Does not matter if it cancels. If it were in the denominator to begin with, it is a problem. Next, we do want to cancel out any factor that are the same. All right, so let's look at this question. I think you guys did this in Algebra 1, I think. Okay, so what is this in the simplest form? State the restriction. Okay, factor, factor, factor. Whatever makes the denominator zero is a problem. Cancel out factors and then simplify. Okay, so go ahead and do that. All right, in the numerator, x plus 2 x plus 5. In the denominator, x minus 5, x plus 2, right? I think that's right. Okay, so this will cancel, but before we cancel, let's just write the restriction. So restriction means what can x not be, or the domain problem. So what can x not be? 5 and negative 2, very good. Okay, next we cancel like terms, um, sorry, factors, top and bottom. So then the simplest form is the reduced function, x plus 5 over x minus 5. Good? Okay, easy. All right, let's try this one. This one, there is no factoring. They are all multiplied together already. So... You just need to write the restriction and write it in the simplest form. We always want to write in the simplest form. So anytime you don't simplify on the test, I always take a half point off because we don't want a very complicated answer. <coughs> Notice you do have two variables. You have x and y. You have to write the restriction for both. All right, let's take a look. First of all, uh, factor, factor, factor. There's nothing to factor, so we're going to skip that step. Second, what makes the denominator zero? Well, let's look at the denominator. What makes this zero? When x is 
Zero. Okay, so restriction. X can't be zero. What else? Y cannot be zero. What about that negative six? That cannot even be a zero. Okay, so I'm asking this question because a lot of people keep making this negative six uh, zero, and then they're just like, X cannot be negative six. No, that has no X in there, so we just ignore. All the constants we ignore. Um, okay, so now we reduce. Mm, that makes a negative four. That cancels, and then left with an X, this cancels with a Y. So the simplest form is negative four X over Y. Good, easy. All right, let's practice. Oops. Okay, let's have you try this one. Restriction in simplest form, let me know when you're done. First thing is make sure you factor correctly, right? All right, so the restriction is x not equal to 3 and 2. The simplest form is x plus 4 over x minus 3. Okay. All right, let's do a little trickier ones. What is this thing in simplest form? Now we have two things multiplied together. We're still going to do the same thing. Factor, 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 and then look at the denominator. That's the restriction, and then cancel. All right, you can do this. So go ahead and do that. Factor, factor, factor. Write the restriction that's in the denominator, and then cancel. Okay, so let me just give you a hint. First of all, factor, factor, factor. Second, everything in the denominator, okay? Everything in the denominator. Restriction, x is not equal to five, negative one and negative three. Everything in the denominator is a problem. Okay, next we cancel. So this cancels, this cancels. So we have simplest form, which is x minus two times x plus five over x plus one. Okay, if you leave it like that, you're good. You don't have to multiply anything back together. All right. Uh, if you, you have tried the next one um, because you finished the previous one, I'm going to just give you the answer. It's x not equal to plus minus 4. The simplest form is 2 times x plus 1 over x plus 4 squared. So there are 2x plus 4. All right, let's try another kind. This one... We're going to divide. Okay, when you divide a fraction with a fraction, what do you do with that second fraction? Yeah? Multiply by, Multiply by reciprocal. So this is 2 minus x over <laughs> x squared plus 2x plus 1. We're going to multiply by x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 3x minus 10. Okay, so when you, you have a dividing um, by a fraction, you always flip the second fraction. All right, now it's basically the same question as before. Factor, factor, factor. Write the restriction. Okay, this is the, um, the confusing part. The restriction is only after you flip the fraction, not before. Does that make sense? When you have a dividing problem, that second one is before you flipped it. That is not in the denominator. We don't write that restriction. Once you flip it, we look at the denominator. Okay? All right. So go ahead and try this one. Um, but I am going to tell you that there is another trick. The other trick has to do with this 2 minus x. What's going to happen is you're going to try to look at it and you're going to say, oh, I wish it were a x minus 2. Well, you could. You could make it an x minus 2. What you do is you factor out a negative sign, and then that switches um, signs or its direction. Okay, so if you couldn't see that, I will do one here just to make sure that everybody understands. I'm going to take out a negative 1, 
So that means all of these I have to divide by negative 1. So that is negative 2 plus x. And remember that in a addition problem, we can switch, um, I don't remember what property, I think it was commutative property. So we can switch that. So that is negative x minus 2. So 2 minus x is the same as negative x minus 2. All right, go ahead and finish this problem. Okay, so the restriction on this problem is negative 1, negative 5, and 2. And the final function looks like, or the final expression looks like negative, x minus 1 over x plus 1 times x plus 5. Okay, and then if you went on to the next practice, this one looks like x not equal to plus minus 1, negative 4, and 3. And the simplest form is 2x over x minus 1. All right, let's try harder one. Mm, which one do you guys want to do? <laughs> three. three? Yeah. Let's do three. Let's do three. Okay, fraction, division bar, fraction. That just means fraction divided by fraction. So the first fraction, which is on the top, divided by, that big fraction bar just means divided by, 12m plus 8n over 5m squared. Okay, so we still need to do a flip the second fraction or the reciprocal. So this is 9m plus 6n over m squared n squared times 5m squared over 12m plus 8m. Okay, same thing as before. Um, you need to factor, 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 write the restriction. The restriction on this one is tricky. Uh, and then um, uh, cancel and then write the simplest form. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Please do that with your partner because this one is tricky. Okay, let's do this one. Okay, so first, take out the greatest common factor. So for this one is 3, and we get a 3m plus 2n over m squared n squared times 5m squared, and take out the greatest common factor, which is 4, um, 3m plus 2n. Before you cancel anything, everything in the denominator is a problem. So m cannot be 0, n cannot be 0, and 3m plus 2n cannot be 0. Because that whole thing, somehow, if they combine in a way where it's zero, it's going to be a problem. Next, cancel, <coughs> cancel, cancel. Okay, so n does not cancel, m cancels. This part cancels. So the, rest uh, the final reduced function is 15 over 4 n squared. Okay, the trickiest part is this part. All right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because that's a factor. 